Oh, it's like a very, very cheap, very disgusting sausage. It's just absolutely disgusting. You would have to be desperate to eat one of these. Hi, I'm Dan Snow, and I've come to a wartime kitchen to find out what an ordinary British family would have eaten during Second World War rationing. The UK had too many people and not enough food. Britain had been a big importer of food before the Second World War. And as war broke out, the British government became scared that German submarines would sink all those ships carrying food to Britain, the British people would starve, and Britain would have to surrender. So on the 8th of January 1940, rationing was brought in. Rationing just means that people are allocated a very particular amount of food each. It's very, very efficient. Everyone got one of these ration books uh, to register at their local shops. Then shopkeepers were supplied with just the right amount of food for everyone registered on their books. Ration books had a sort of coupon system so people could only purchase what they were allotted and no more. A weekly ration was an egg, two ounces of butter, two ounces of tea, an ounce of cheese, eight ounces of sugar, four ounces of bacon, and four ounces of margarine. Meat wasn't immediately rationed, but when it was, it was done on price, meaning cheaper cuts quickly became very popular. Also, if you were the royal family, aristocrats, or Winston Churchill, and you had a country estate, you could have food brought into your London residence. So whilst the royal family and Winston Churchill made a big show of having a ration book, they were eating pretty well. And luckily for Winston Churchill, booze wasn't rationed. Ah, spam. Now, Spam actually wasn't on the ration. It was an American salted, tinned, processed pork that was very, very popular. Tinning was a kind of wonder technology. It meant that food could be kept good to eat for between one and five years. So Spam was issued to a lot of soldiers in the field. And the Americans used it to curry favor with people back here in the UK. Let's give it a try. It's like a very, very cheap, very disgusting sausage. But frankly, in a world where meat is rationed, this stuff would have tasted pretty good. Bread and powdered eggs. What a treat. Right. There was actually a ban on white bread during the Second World War. Something called the National Loaf was brought in. Bakers got together and worked out to use wholemeal flour to produce a standardized loaf. So here you go, nice brown loaf. All right, I'm gonna have some powdered eggs. Eggs were rationed, so by July 1942, powdered eggs became available. Thank you to the good old USA. What you do is you dry out an egg, and then you smash it to bits. Then you keep it, and it will last for years and years. The allowance was one tin of dried eggs every two months. Now, one tin was about the same as 12 fresh eggs. So 12 fresh eggs every two months. I'm gonna go crazy and have it all in one go. You have to add water to this egg mixture to turn it back into something approaching egg. It was one tablespoon of dried egg, two tablespoons of water. If you live near the countryside and live near some hens, lucky you, you give up your egg ration and exchange it for other food. Doesn't taste that much like eggs, to be honest. So tasteless. The Ministry of Food was desperate to get people cooking with dried eggs. Dried eggs, they insisted, were just as good as fresh eggs and should be used in the same way. They're very useful for main dishes. That's propaganda, that is. Aha, butter! My favourite bit of bread and butter. But of course, this isn't butter. There's a war on. Hitler doesn't let you have nice things. This is dripping. It's the rendered fat that drops off a piece of beef. Now, I think my dad must have Stockholm Syndrome because he still talks about the dripping he remembers from his childhood with great affection. Let's see what it's like. It's disgusting. It tastes like rendered fat that's dropped off a piece of beef. Now, when it's hot, as you'll know from your baking tray, it's like a clear liquid. But at room temperature, it congeals. It solidifies. It tastes like a bit of plasticky plasticine. It is. 
disgusting. I don't know what my dad's on about. It was a very uh, versatile food or substance. I suspect you could probably use it to grease the axles on your truck, but people loved eating it in a bread and dripping form. Piece of bread, dripping on the top, a little bit of salt and pepper. Why not? Treat yourself. Okay, here goes. Meat was heavily rationed. You were allowed four ounces of bacon a week and other meat was available at a price. That meant people started turning to alternative forms of meat. Meat that in peacetime you would overlook as unsuitable for human consumption. And that included pig's trotters, hooves, things like that. Uh, but also whale meat. Whale meat was an unrationed alternative to meat. It was sold as whack-on. Corned whale meat with its fishy flavour removed. Can't wait to try that. Let's get into these pig trotters. Oh, goodness. I mean, it's just absolutely disgusting. You would have to be desperate, desperate to eat one of these. There still seems to be mud from the farmyard caught in this trotter here. One thing that was readily available during those wartime years was vegetables, you'll be glad to hear. These were not rationed. They became a mainstay during the war. People were expected and encouraged to grow vegetables wherever they could. The expression, dig for victory, was a popular catchphrase. There was a huge rise in the number of allotments all over the UK. This is a fake apricot flan. It's in fact made from carrot. I mean, carrots grew like weeds in the UK. I've got carrots everywhere. Turnips, there's plenty of those. So this mock apricot flan was cleverly designed to fool you into eating it when it was, in fact, carrots smeared with jam. It fooled me. In 1941, the Minister for Food, Lord Walton, issued this clarion call for self-sustainability. He said, this is a food war. Every extra row of vegetables in these allotments saves shipping. The battle on the kitchen front cannot be won without help from the kitchen garden. Isn't an hour in the garden better than an hour in the queue? So true. Everyone was encouraged to start victory gardens. Dig up any patch of earth near your house and plant vegetables in it. And to use substitutes. Good old turnips, carrots, get them in the food. In the absence of sugar, which is very heavily rationed, Carrots were added to desserts like this to sweeten them. And they had the added benefit, according to the government, in that they helped you see better in the dark and would protect you from bombs and during blackouts. But that's just because the government wanted people to fill their bellies with carrots. They wouldn't eat anything else. I tell my daughter that she eats the crust on her toast. It'll make her hair curly. It's not true. Right. And just in case you thought cartoon characters pushing annoying public information campaigns is anything new, they had Dr. Carrot and Potato Pete during the Second World War cartoon characters to get people to eat more vegetables as they were plentiful and cheap. Thanks for joining me folks. If you've enjoyed watching, please click on any of the videos on this screen for more delicious content.